Hey, what's happening, guys? My name is Adam, and this is my channel, Drone Guy and H, coming to you from the state of New Hampshire in the United States. And basically, I just want to get my opinion, my voice out there for the rest of the community, the drone community, that is, and basically let you guys know about the remote ID. So, yes, a lot of other YouTubers... Fam way more famous YouTubers than myself have done this review and I'm doing it to get my opinion, my voice heard. Um, I have commented on the FAA's site, which I want all of you guys to do too. I know I don't have a huge following, but each and every one of you that follows me should go there. Whether you personally fly a drone or you know somebody who flies a drone, this affects all of us. Um, and it's really important that, you know, all of us, all our voices are heard and I would really like you to go over there. So let's get this started. Basically, the idea behind it is it's the license plate in the sky. I get it. The federal government wants to look after us. I get it. So problem number one, there's been three recorded collisions with aircraft in the history of drones. So three recorded incidents and zero, let's repeat that again guys, zero have caused any casualties, fatalities, or anything. No issues. So why is this an issue? Because the FAA wants it to be an issue. Pretty plain and simple. We're going to start off with the types of remote ID that are proposed. Once again, this is a proposal, guys. You need to do your part and write in and tell the FAA what you think. And I'll get a little, I'll go back to that. But um, so there's three different types of remote ID. The first one is called standard. So with the standard remote ID, your drone will broadcast um, a frequency and will be picked up by these towers that they say that they're gonna put in and implement and all that. Well, let's go with problem number one of that particular instance is they already have this in place, guys. They just want us to pay for it and be able to spread our information around. So that's a problem with me because I don't need Joe Schmo down the street knowing where and where I'm flying my drone and if he wants to call the cops on me 20 times who do you think that's gonna hassle me not him me so with that being said the other part of the standard remote ID is inclusive in internet so with the internet connection which I live in New Hampshire guys let's be honest I don't live you know, I live about 20 miles north of the capital, which is Concord. And if you go south, you hit Manchester, New Hampshire. And around there, no problems with internet con connectivity on a phone. Zero problems. Where I live, it's touch and go. You know, where I like to fly, where there's no people around, I don't know if I'm going to have internet or not. And to touch on that subject, you know, I'm a part 107 flyer. And, um... You know, if I go out somewhere, if I drive an hour north, west, east, whatever, and I go to fly and I can't connect to the internet or this UAS um, system, how am I supposed to do my job? Yes, it is only part-time. I do have another job, but that's not the point. The point is, if I go out because a client has hired me to do a job, I can't even do that job. That's a problem, guys. You know, that's my biggest concern with this whole thing. One of my biggest concerns with this whole thing. So that's your standard remote ID. It's supposed to be able to switch between the two of them, this, that, and the other. And, you know, that's an issue too. You know, while it's switching between one and the other, is that going to tell my drone to land? Is it going to force it to land? That's not what's clear in the FAA's write-up of all this. Whether if I lose connectivity to the broadcast and the internet, 
whether my drone's just going to force land. You know what, guys? Some of the best reception you'll get. Um, I fly DJI drones, but with other drones too. You know, the best reception you're going to get is in a wide open area and around me, that's over lakes. You know, I'm really careful I don't send my drone too far over the lake, but, you know, I can, I can get it out several hundred meters and have clear, beautiful reception, get beautiful photos, beautiful videos, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, I just, I just don't want that to be an issue. And, uh, you know, if I'm over the water and it sends my drone down, now I'm out like 1,000, 2,000, couple hundred, whatever dollars. And who's paying for that? This guy right here. That's not okay with me. Very not okay. Portion of this is called limited. Well, limited is just internet connected. Just went over that, you know. And, um, you know, for you guys that may, may fly in more metropolitan areas where you get great internet connectivity, awesome. You know, you can, you know, connect the internet, this, that, and the other, and go fly your drone, and it can broadcast this, that, and the other. But for somebody like me, you know, I could be flying around, my drone could, or I should say the controller could be connected to the internet through my phone or a tablet or whatever it might be, and... Who knows if I'm going to have a steady connection or not, you know? I have no guarantee of that, where, at least where I live. Um, and for you guys out there that love to fly with your tablets, not everybody's tablet's connected to the internet. So now you're telling me I have to piggyback off the Wi-Fi from my phone to my tablet and hope that that's a good, secure connection and all this. There's a lot of ifs in this, guys, and... I've flown with my phone and my tablet connected to the internet before. No good. Three times I've had issues where I connected to the internet, and there's only three times that I tried, and um, my, my screen on my uh, DJI Go 4 app went blank. Thank God I follow um, the rules because visual line of sight, I could see the drone. I was still connected to the drone. But the DJI, DJI Go 4 app just went out. Uh, once it went blank and twice it just totally lost connection with the drone. Through the controller, I still had control of the drone, but the app was gone. So, you know, that's just another issue with all of this. And these, these are minor issues, guys. There's way larger issues. I definitely suggest you should go and look at everybody else's reviews online and what they say because, you know, I'm just giving my opinions on what I've read and what I've seen and what I've heard. So here's the kicker. The fence, as I like to call it, the last option for the uh, remote ID is if your, if your drone, your UAS, your uh, home model aircraft, whatever, doesn't have remote ID, you're limited to a small area set up by a community. And I hate to tell you guys, but from everything I've heard, um, most of these areas set up by community people don't want drones there. They like to fly their model act aircraft They've been doing this for years. They see the drone guys as like, oh, this newfangled whatever that's just going to get in our way. You know, absolutely. I get it. You know, people butt heads, but we all have to get together on this, guys, and, you know, tell the FAA what we think. Because if we don't tell the FAA what we think, there's a good chance this proposal may go through and it's going to be no good for the drone community. Not only is it going to be no good for the drone community, it's not going to be good for anybody who flies model aircraft, period. They'll be limited to their, you know, their FAA approved site or whatever. So if they want to go out in their field and they have, you know, a couple hundred yards or, you know, two, three, five, twenty acres, they legally can't do it. 
yes, people are going to go do that. And, you know, that's your choice. I totally understand. But for me, as a drone pilot, as also a Part 107 pilot, you know, I need to try to follow the letter of the law because if I don't, I'm going to get hit with huge fines and I can lose my Part 107. That's not good for me, guys, you know? So, yeah, I'm going to put a link down in the description below of where you can go and make your voice heard. Because, like I said, guys, we all, all need to go make our voice heard. And uh, we're, today is January 6th. I don't know if I'll post this today or in the next couple days. Whatever, whatever. I'm just a small YouTuber, you know. But um, last time I looked, there was about 1,600 replies. Guys, we need to get at that in the thousands, not 1,600. Yeah, I know that's a thousand and a half, but we need this like in the 8, 10, 20,000 comments on this to make sure our voice is heard, to make sure that we let the FAA know this is not okay. And like I said before, I highly suggest that all of you go, guys, I know this is going to take time, you know, and go check out the other channels. Just Google, or even better, in my opinion, YouTube search remote ID, and you will get a lot of videos that come up. Um, and also, per my suggestion, you know, you click on the major YouTubers. I'm going to throw some names out there. Ken Heron, you know, click on his site because what comes up when you hit remote ID is, at least as of today, um, is a video he put out like over a week ago. But if you look, he did a video like a couple days ago that really speaks to more of his mind and his, um, let's call it dissing of the remote ID. And... The same thing with um, another major YouTuber, Drone You, you know, and let's just say that he did a, you know, a um, tutorial on this not too long ago. I don't, don't quote me on this, guys, but over a week ago, and then he puts one out another, again a couple days ago, totally slamming the remote ID. Go check out his video. Um... I may link them in the comments below. I'm not really sure how all that, you know, uh, works. I don't know if I'm going to get flagged or whatever. I don't make any money on YouTube. But uh, I will give you guys the link to leave your comments at the FAA site down below. Please, guys, go leave your comments. Tell your family members to go leave a comment. Um, and while you're doing that... Um, Make sure you voice your opinion properly. You know, it is a, a federal site. You know, don't go on there swearing and say, oh, blah, blah, bleepity bleep, whatever, whatever. You know, go there, make an informed decision. Watch, you know, if you want to read the 319 page FAA proposal, all the more power to you. But if you spend, you know, 20 30 minutes watching youtube videos you'll get the gist of what this is all about and guys it's no good so go leave your comments keep them clean keep them organized keep them professional as much as possible and uh tell other people you know that you know either are either interested in your work like your work whatever the more our voice is heard the more this is not going to get passed and this is your chance to vote on something that matters to us, matters to me, matters to you. So let's do this, guys. And uh, thank you for listening. I know this is going to be long, but uh, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot.